you're not going to want to miss this. So welcome, welcome, welcome to class three of the 2016 Summer Prosperity Class. How many people are here for the first time tonight? Well, you're just going to have to wing it, so get up off your butts and up on your feet. And we are going to begin this with our treatment for prosperity together aloud. I swear to know that God is the source of all supply and that money is God in action. I know that my good is here now. I am so rich and so full. spaces. The fire walk was on Monday. We saw the house on Thursday and closed on the half on the we got contract signed the following Thursday. I 
apply for it. I didn't tell my partner because so I was like, sorry, I spent a lot of money. Yeah. And they sent me a letter saying it was reinstated and you do qualify. So we're going to Myrtle Beach for free. <laughs> summer prosperity class. We have increased income. We create increased income. Every one of us creates increased income of some form. We do our treatments every day just like we did at the very beginning of the class and John and I treat on your tear-off pieces every day. Every day. We hold them in our hands. We have four little hands on these holding them, doing the treatment for increased income. So if you weren't here um, last week when we handed these out, I want to give you an opportunity to join the Increased Income Program of Center for Spiritual Living Summer Prosperity class. The deal is that you do your treatment for prosperity at least once a day. I'd recommend 100 times a day, 500 times a day, 1,000 times a day. Get it burned into your brain that you're creating money. And then whatever increased money you get, you are agreeing to tithe on that increase. Now, I would recommend you tithe on every penny that ever hits your hand, but the agreement for the program is that you tithe on the increase. And what that does is that teaches you about tithing. It sets spiritual law in motion so that you get more and more and more from that and continue to be in the flow. So if you want to be a part of the increased income program of this class, I'll give you a flyer. I would recommend that you fill it out, tear off the please put me on the list part of it, and keep the one with the treatment on it. So when you wake up tomorrow morning, you've got the treatment to read. Who wants to be a part of the increased income? Pass those down. Pass those down. And you know, you can give some of these to your friends too. You don't have to uh, physically be sitting in the room. Fran, come on up for it. You can have, you can, you can watch online, you can be a part of it and demonstrate money like crazy. You know, you can demonstrate anywhere from a dollar to a million dollars. It's totally up to you as to how you use the power of thought, your intentions, your feelings, and all of the creative energy in the universe. So again, if you've got this for the first time tonight, fill in the please put me on the list part if you want to be a part of it, and tear it off. Don't put in the whole brochure back at the baskets at the end of the class. You want to keep the part that has the treatment on it. And then do the treatment every day, many, many, many times a day. And then look around and be open and allow that into your life. Be ready and willing to have large sums of money show up. Do your treatment on the way to the mailbox. Do your treatment when you open up your checkbook. Do your treatment over and over and over again, and you'll be up here next week hooping and hollering and shouting about all of the great stuff that's come into your life. Any questions? Okay, John's got a whole thing tonight, so oh, I love yeah. <laughs> What do you think about this? I love it. I love it. I had an, a, an epiphany reading uh, when, you know, on virtually every page there's a line. What does it say? I am wealth, I am abundance, I am joy. That's what it says. Why do you think it's written all over this book? Because he wants you to get it. 
you want. Because thought initiates form. Yes, it does. Thought doesn't create form, <laughs> but it initiates it. It impresses upon the law of spirit, and all possibilities already exist, so it brings into alignment that which we think. And he's very specific about that, and he puts it in here all these times because he wants you to say it. I found as I was reading along that sometimes I would treat it just like a break and go past it. And I caught myself, I said, what are you doing? What are you doing? Don't not read it. So what I do now is I not only read it as I'm reading through the book, but I read it aloud. And I don't actually just read it aloud. When I get to the end of the second page before I turn it, I'll go, I go back and I read all of them again. Because I really want to get that. Say it with me again. I am wealth, I am abundance, I am joy. That's what he wants you to get. And he's not hiding it. It's on every page. So remember that and use it. And, and if you find yourself trying to slip by it, stop everything. And get it. Because that's the lesson. That's the thing to get. Now beyond that, there's all kind of great stuff in here. And we're going to work mostly from chapter 6. Because I love... Yeah, chapter 6. Chapter 6 is about goals. Yes. yes. But I'm going to take you way past just goals. We're going to do an entire process tonight, a process that I have never possibly approached completing in two hours. However, it's about a six-hour program if you really want to do it, if not six days. Um, but what, the way we're going to do it is we're going to initiate the beginning of each step, and then your work for the rest of the week is to go back and finish the work. So we're going to take some time to go into each step and get a sense of what I want to teach you and, and just begin to practice it. And you're going to come, go home with an incomplete set of, of, uh, of paper that you have started writing on. And then you're going to go and sit with it. And at least that's what I'm encouraging you to do. If you're not willing to do this, I don't know why you're here. So uh, the first step of creating this abundant life, according to my understanding, is to know the reason you're on the planet, to know why you're here, to have a purpose. You've all heard today. Who has a who, who can can right now recite to this room full of people their purpose statement? All right, then we all have work to do. Except Barbara can do it, so I'm going to do it, Barbara. Oops. Oh, there you go. My, pur my purpose is to teach the principles of science of mind to anyone who will stand still and listen. <laughs> she means that. <laughs> She's still teaching it to me. <laughs> and my purpose is to reveal and release the power of divine presence wherever I am and with whomever I'm with. That's why I'm here. My purpose is to release that presence. It's in all of us. And, and show it off and see what's there so you can use it. That's why I'm here. And when I find that I'm in alignment with that and I'm doing that, my life is brilliant and wonderful. And when I'm not, when I'm complaining or judging or finding fault or not living my life according to that understanding, I'm not happy. <laughs> and I'm going to be happy. So that's what I do. And when I look back on my life, what I see is that that, that has always been my intention. That has always been my work to do that. Even when I didn't know it. You know, I still found joy in connecting with someone's brilliance, with everyone's brilliance. And that's really important to me, so that's why I'm here. So I want to give you, what we're going to do is write a, uh, a purpose statement. Sandy's got pens. If you need pens, everybody's going to need a pen. Sure, you can use everyone. This is the color of the paper you're getting. They're coming back to you. Uh, don't write it yet. Let's talk about what this thing of a purpose means. I want to read you one of my favorite purpose statements that when I heard it, it just it was so wonderful. It's not mine, but it, it was Charles Fillmore's, one of the founders of Unity. And this is how, you remember he lived you know, over 100 years ago. So this is the way he spoke his purpose. You all with me? Everybody here? No. Okay. Charles Fillmore, I fairly sizzle with a zeal and enthusiasm and spring forth with a mighty faith to do the things that ought to be done by me. Isn't that beautiful? you got to hear it one more time. I fairly sizzle with a zeal and enthusiasm and spring forth with a mighty faith to do the things that ought to be done 
by me. Isn't that great? Didn't he nail that? I love that. Uh, it was in the book, and I've been telling people about this for, for lots of years, uh, of this idea of, of a uh, college where they studied a group and found out who had, had a sense of purpose for their lives and who didn't. Only 3% of the students at Yale in 1930 had that. And what they did was, they, they, after they did this survey of all the students at Yale, they went back uh, 20 years later, found as many of them as they could that were still around, and asked them how their lives were going. The 3% that knew why they were here had amassed more wealth than the 97% collectively. There's something about knowing why you're here and living according to that every day. So, and there's something, and as he talks about a lot in the book, there's something about being able to write it down and articulate it and know it. My experience of, uh, of doing this was, uh, was an arduous path. I first heard about writing a purpose statement when I was in my 20s. I went to a, a workshop in Houston, Texas. Must have been a thousand people in the room. And the guy was, uh, was brilliant, and he said his purpose statement. Oh, that's beautiful. So I went up and I read it, but I didn't write it down, and it didn't take but a day or so before I completely lost it. And so I started trying to work on mine and come up with something and I'd sit with it and work on it. And then I, real, I wrote it down and I kept it in my, in my, my uh, 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 day timer. So if somebody said, what's your purpose? I'd go, give me a second, I'll go get it for you. <laughs> That's not it. And I knew it wasn't it. And then one day I heard Robert Schuler's. And I don't remember it today, but in that moment it dazzled me. It was about creating something out of nothing. And I tried to emulate that. That didn't work. And then one day, and I can't tell you when, but one day when I was going over this, because I do go over it, it just hit me. And it was so clear. And I never had to think about it again. My purpose is to reveal and release the power of divine presence wherever I am and in whatever I do. That's, you know, and when, when I'm clear about that, my life works. And when I'm not, it doesn't work as well. So I want to invite you all tonight to work on that. You've got a purple piece of paper. But let's talk about the elements of, of a purpose before we actually write. And this is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen about that. It's by Rumi. Translated by Coleman Barks. It's called The Real Work. Listen to these words. There is one thing in the world that you must never forget to do. If you forget everything else and not this, there is nothing to worry about. But if you remember everything else and forget this, then you have done nothing in your life. Nothing. It's as if a king had sent you to some country to do a task, and you perform a hundred other services, but not the one he sent you to do. So human beings come to this world to do particular work. That work is the purpose. And each is specific to the person. If you don't do it, it's as though a priceless Indian sword were used to slice rotten meat. It's a golden bowl being used to cook turnips, when one filing from that bowl could buy a hundred other suitable pots. It's a knife of the finest tempering, nailed into a wall to hang things on. You say, but look, I'm using a dagger. It's not lying idle. Do you hear how ludicrous that sounds? For a penny, an iron nail could be bought to serve the purpose. You say, but I spend my energies on lofty enterprises. I study jurisprudence and philosophy and logic and astronomy and medicine and all the rest. But consider, why do you do these things? They are all branches of yourself. Remember the deep root of your being. The deep root of your being is the reason you're here. It's your purpose. How can you articulate your purpose? So we're going to construct... A, a statement of purpose tonight. Here are the elements of a statement of purpose. Concise. One sentence. One sentence. Not two, three, four, five, six sentences. No. That's not a purpose. That's uh, something else. Concise. It captures your spirit. You go, yeah. It captures your passion. It reveals your passion. This is important.
You should be able to say it to a 12-year-old and they get it. Nothing fancy. Exactly. It's got to, it's got to be the collaboration of your heart and your mind. If it's one or the other, you've only caught part of it. It's got to be real, it's got to be functional, but it's got to be passionate at the same time. One thing that some people work with, the idea that it could be epitaph. It could be the final thing that was said about you. And for it to be real, you must be able to recite it from memory, even and especially under stress. Like if Drew Bass said he was going to sit on your chest. <laughs> <laughs> if you couldn't do it. You should be able to do it even then. Some of you don't know who Drew is. He's a big guy. <laughs> this, these are the ideas that, that create this. This is the work that centers you and makes you real in this world. So tonight begin the task. And this is a worksheet you've got. It doesn't have to be final, but write something down. My purpose is to what? What? What feeds you? What is the essence of why you're here? What would you say tonight? And trust me, if this is your first shot at this, it will not be your last. But if you don't write anything on the, on the paper, chances are you won't ever do this. So write something tonight. Something that you can look at and go, yeah, but maybe you'll want to change it something to get you going. So whatever you got right now, give it your best shot and write down, my purpose is to, what comes to you? idea on this that they would be willing to share. I assist others in enhancing their daily experience of the divine. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, with the word purpose in the front of it, my purpose is to assist others. Very nice. My purpose is to touch hearts and bring forth truth through music. My purpose is to be the best me I can be and to spread love and light. <laughs> so my purpose has changed over the years and my purpose is to be loved and have fun. Anybody else? We got it? Good. That's a good start. Go ahead. My purpose is to help to the best of my ability. Okay. My purpose is to love and know God as deeply as possible and share my knowledge and love with everyone. Only three hands in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you've got to start here. Now the thing that makes the purpose get you to the place of goals is you, we all have to figure out what the key values are in our lives. 
So pass these papers out of the front, but take three. <laughs> take three and pass them out. Just a little sheet of paper, one through 12, okay? Take three, and what we're going to do when you get it is I want you to stop and think, what are the key values of your life? Now, let's, let, let's talk first about how you figure out if this is a primary value. A primary value cannot be reduced to anything else. What does that mean? Well, if I said uh, a key value in my life is family, I would, and I, I, then I ask myself, well, what do I get from family? Well, I get love. Okay, well, what do I get from love? Love. Yeah. Primary, primary value. Can't, can't reduce it. Can't actually get it more primary than that. Um, I have a primary value of, uh, let's see, let me get one that I can do that with. Uh, now, there's so many that are primary. Integrity is primary. Truth. Uh, truth is primary. Uh, uh, understanding is primary. Uh, How about money? What do you get from money? What do you get when you have money? Freedom. Freedom. Freedom is primary. See, I, money really isn't something that's a value in your life. Money is, is, is a tool, but is it a primary value? Thank you, that was a good one. Yes, what do you got? Uh, yeah, you're saying uh, four values, uh, one that you're expecting in yourself or from other people. Only yourself. Here's something that people do. They try to impose their values on other people. It doesn't work. Thank you. Excellent question. This is only about you, and it's not what you expect. It's who you are. And we're actually going to take it beyond this and start developing this, but you've got to have your list to make it work, okay? So go ahead and write down as many as come to your mind, and then we're going to do a little exercise with this. You want to get at least probably six on this list tonight. The list certainly will grow. You have hundreds of values. You're looking for the top ones, the top 12. piece of paper, that's great. <laughs> if you have less than eight, keep working. You can do this. Come on, you can do this. this one out to any of you that might want it. Prosperity. Just living prosperously. That's one of mine. Prosperity. 
prosperity is way more than money. absolute most important value, the absolute most important one that you have to have in your life. It's essential for your very existence and circle it. The number one answer in the room is love. Well, of course. No, it's not on everybody's list. It's not the top of everybody's list. It's actually number two on my list. Love. You've heard that word. Oh, I that top of my list. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So, so that's, that's an easy place to go. Now the question is, what's the second one? And I'm going to teach you how to prioritize these. So I need, uh, I need someone to, who's willing to, to share their list with me? Lynn, come share your list with me. I hope you don't have more than 12. <clears throat> well, you're only going to give me 12, okay? We're going to do this. So give me, give, just go ahead and give me what you got. Freedom. Okay. Okay. Which one did you circle? The no, most number one, um, number one, absolutely most important. Oh, love was number one. Oh, okay. Well, that's all right. Let's do that. Okay. So here's your list: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. That's good. This is good. Doesn't really matter. So here's your list, and love is the most important. So here's what you do: you cross out love and you write love. Okay. Now we're gonna do the process to see what's next. What's more important to you, freedom or integrity? Freedom. Okay, what's more important to you, freedom or wisdom? See what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Freedom or wisdom? Mm -hmm. What's more important, wisdom or peace? Peace. Okay, what's more important, peace or joy? Joy. What's more important, joy or health? health. What's more important, health or harmony? Health. What's more important, health or authenticity? What's more important, health or compassion? Health. Health or prosperity? Health. So health is number two. Mm -hmm. Cross yeah. off health. Okay, <laughs> after health, everything above it, health was more important. And then we got down to, let's see. Let's say joy. Let's go to joy, the one above it. What's more important, joy or harmony? <coughs> or is, are they the same thing? Is one held in the other one? Get that question? Harmony is between these balance. Okay. They're, They're different. Okay, that's great. So joy or harmony, which is more important? Joy. So joy or authenticity, which is more important? Authenticity. Okay, so we left joy now, we're going to authenticity. Authenticity or compassion, which one's more important? Authenticity. Authenticity or prosperity? Ooh. <laughs> she likes prosperity. Yeah, prosperity. Okay, so prosperity is at the bottom of the list. We move it over. And the next one was authenticity. And we can move it over because we made it to the bottom of the list. All right. So let's, above that, harmony or compassion, which is more important? Oh, I think you said joy was over harmony, didn't you? So let's go to joy. Joy or compassion? Joy or compassion? Which one's more important? Joy. Peace or harmony? Which one is more important? Peace or harmony? I, I, I can drill those two together. And which one holds the bigger picture? Peace. Peace. So we take harmony off the list and we go to peace. Which is more important, peace or compassion in your life? Peace. So peace comes over. 
is off this list. And then we've got compassion, but we're going to hold that. So let's do wisdom or compassion. Which is more important? Wisdom. Okay. So wisdom comes over. Integrity or compassion? Integrity. Freedom or compassion? And we just prioritized your list. Now let's look at the list. Love and health go together very nicely. Health and prosperity are good. Prosperity, authenticity, authenticity, joy, peace, peace, wisdom, wisdom, integrity. Is there any match here? Do they play inside of each other at all? Do they conflict to me? No, do they, do they play inside? Are they, are they alike? alike? No, not okay, really. they're different in your mind because it's only her her definition of these terms. Okay. Doesn't matter what anybody else thinks about. This is like knowledge, but like okay. knowledge. The application of knowledge. Yes. Okay. Integrity, freedom. Integrity, freedom. Okay, compassion. I don't see any conflicts there. The kinds of things that some people end up with conflicts depending on how they define things. Not everybody, but some people. A lot of lists look like this. Love. Freedom. freedom. Now, some people don't see anything wrong with that, but some people think, yeah, I want to be loved, but I want to be able to do whatever I want whenever I want it. <laughs> and I want to be loved like that. You think that could create a conflict in somebody's life? Yeah. <laughs> not, not, not everybody, but some people. It depends on how you do it. So what we did was we took the list here. We prioritized it. This is the most important, at this moment, in Lynn's life, the top ten most important values. So what we're going to do now is ask you to take your second sheet and do what I just did. Ask yourself what's more important, this one or that one. And go through this and prioritize your list. Get stuck, just raise your hand, I'll come talk to you. until something sticks, whatever is the highest priority of checking those. If you've already said that something is more important to you than something else, you don't have to compare that something else to other things.
goes pretty quick if you just compare them on down the list. Just comparing two. Not looking the whole list. This or this. This or this. This or this. What's more important? So you know which one you've done. Keep going, guys. We're almost we're almost ready to move on. I want you to get this. important to prioritize your values. Because sometimes you have to think about, sometimes you've got to think about what's really most important here. And when you're faced with a challenge in your life, you line it up with your values. And if you find that the thing that you're holding here, that, that, it, that you're just kind of struggling with something, you look on your values and go, something's more important than that. That's where I'm going to put my energy. Sometimes I have found in my life with, with my values, well, let me, let me just give you the bottom line on values. The purpose of values are never, ever, ever to seek to achieve them. They must be present in your life all the time. If you're going to live a fun, happy, joyous life, you're not struggling to meet your values. If you have a value on this list that you'd really like to, to achieve, take it off your list. It is messing up your life. You're going to achieve these every single day, and I'm going to show you how you will prove to yourself that you will achieve these every single day. Because what you're going to do with this list, once you've done your prioritizing, is you're going to take each one and you're going to write down, not tonight, you're going to do this on your own time, but you're going to write down how you get that in your life. Every day. All the time. Always there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because if you don't have that value in your life, you're suffering. You're not enjoying your life. This is not an achievement list. This is a values list. And we base our health, our substance, on, on being in alignment with our values. So you'll, you, you, honestly, if there's something in there you think that is just out of your reach, take it off your list. Don't let it be important. Somebody put that in your thinking. A parent, a teacher, someone said you had to add that. But you don't. You get to pick. And you want to pick things that are easy to have in your life. So, many years ago when I started this process, 
I actually have my, my, my day timer still or my book that has these written in it, but I also have the book that, how many of you are members of the center? I have treated for all of you. This is the book that I use to keep those, those lists. They look like that. They have names on them. And I make little notes on them often, and I talk to people, and, and uh, we figure out where we're going, and it's always my joy to do that in the morning. But at the beginning of this book that I keep over my house, the front page has my name and my purpose statement. Not like I don't know it, but it's nice to have it right there in the front. It's like a title page. <laughs> Next, I have my values. And this is the way I write it. Uh, let's see. My, my first and most important one is I live my life in clarity and purpose. I live my life in clarity and purpose. Clarity is the, is the thing that I think is the most important value. I want to be clear about everything. And I'm pretty clear about a lot of things. And there's always something to be more clear about. So that's good. I'm fine with that. I'm not deficit on that. Clarity is my number one priority and values. My second one is love. I figure love's always there. But, but the clarity, I want, to make, I want to make an absolute statement to myself that I want to be clear. I, want to, I don't want to be confused. I don't want to be lost. I want to be clear in my life. So that's what I see. So what I say about that is, in fact, I'm going to use this one over here. I live my life in clarity and purpose by supporting the spiritual growth of others, by acting according to my purpose statement, by being fully present in the now moment, by being aware of the perfection of my life, and by taking full responsibility for the circumstances of my life. When I do that, I'm clear. How often do I do that? Every day. Every day, something about that is in my life. I'm thinking about it. My second one is I, I'm always aware of love. I don't, I don't believe that I can give love and get love. I believe love is the presence of the divine, so I want to be aware of it. And I do that by, always, by being aware of the oneness of spirit, by looking into the eyes of another, by experiencing beauty, by supporting those around me, and by keeping my heart open. Do I do those things? You bet I do. Do I forget some of them sometimes? Yes, but there's always love in my life. I am never, ever going to say there's no love in my life. That's impossible. And right on down my list. So what I'm going to do is, you've done your, your initial prioritizing. You may find when you start writing these, these ways that you achieve that value in your life, that one doesn't fit. If it doesn't, take it out. Put something else there. Reprioritize them as you're doing it. You go, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm looking at this now, and it really needs to be higher on the list. Or, you know, it's just not that important. It's important, but not that. I'm going to move it down a few. Move it around. Make this thing work for you. And then review it over and over and over again. The idea of values is that you are demonstrating to yourself that you have your values. That you are an integral person who knows what they're about. That's the point of this. And I'm going to do a very bizarre thing. I'm going to share you my purpose statement and, uh, and my, my uh, values. I encourage you not to copy my work. Because <laughs> that will just mess you up. <laughs> but I don't know any better way to do this than to show you how I did it. You only need one of those. But when I open my book and I read those words or look over this list, I go, yep, doing that. Yep, yep, that's me. Yep, that's what I'm doing. And it has really helped make my world work. Any questions about this? Who's willing to actually work on creating a set of values and uh, elements of your values? Who's willing to do that? Okay, all right. It, this is one of the best tools I've ever had to know who I am. You know, what's important, you can actually look on this list and if, some, if, you're, if you're struggling with something, read this list. And you go, oh, oh yeah, I remember who I am. And it cleans it all up. It answers so many questions. Everybody get one? Well, whatever extras we have, we're going to collect back because there's going to be people that aren't here tonight that are going to want these. We'll worry about getting all those together later. There's no big deal right now. 
So the reason that you have two inboxes is I didn't want to do another page. <laughs> I just popped them onto the edge of the page, okay? But they start at the top and they run right down. Those, these are the most important values in my life. This really works for me. Make yourself a sheet like this. Write this down and then edit it and reconsider it and look at the list. How's it working? The first time I wrote the list, just the values list, a, a day later it was an entirely different list. So don't get wed to these things too quickly unless they just resonate with you. If they resonate with you, keep going. You do this process so that you know what your purpose is for being here. And that's another thing. Your purpose must align with all of these values. If you have a purpose statement and you have a value in there somewhere that doesn't, isn't resonant with it, it doesn't, doesn't work with it, then you've got to do, make a choice here. Because this is where conflict comes in our lives, is when we have that inner, inner internal thing where it's, things aren't working. It's because of how we're perceiving the world, and we perceive the world through the lenses we create. And our lenses are these values. Now here's an important part in this too, and it came up early, thank you Breezy. This is not to be imposed on anyone else because no one in the room has exactly the same values and no one in the room, everyone in the room will not, will not define their values the same way. It is never your job to impose your values on another person. They have the right to have their own, even if they don't know what they are. They, they, this is not about you should all be like me. This is for you. This is your pathway to success and prosperity and wealth. This is your... Uh, path of knowing who you are. It's not anybody else's. And when we start imposing our values on other people, the person that really messes up is us. Yeah, so don't. This is for you. This is your treasure map. Use it that way. Don't expect any, that from anybody else. Everyone else will be true to their nature and uh, 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 live according to their values, whether they know them or not. Any questions at this point? Okay, we're going to do one more sheet, at least the top part of it, so let's pass these out. Every one of us has, has things in our lives, people in our lives, ideas about people to help us know who we are. So the top of this blue sheet says, these are the models for my life. There are people that you have met or read about or known at some level, maybe a relative, maybe, maybe a historical figure, maybe a teacher, someone that has, that has stood forth in your life as a good way to be in the world. You can't be just like them, but there's something about them that is resonant in you. And you feel that when you listen to them, or see them, or think about them. These are your models. You're not trying to copy them. But there's something about them that's already in you that you love and appreciate. So what I want you to do is just think about who that might be in your life. The models in your life. And I'll show you mine so that you get a sense of who they are. Strangely, they've all made their transition. I'm getting old, I guess. Uh, my first one was Ken Dyers. He was my first spiritual teacher in Sydney, Australia. He woke me up. What I wrote about him, what, what I have in my list is Ken Dyers, who teaches me to stay clearly focused on my path. That was his gift to me, because I watched him do that. My second one was Robert Schuller. Robert Schuller teaches me to see beyond the visible. That was in his purpose statement really dazzled me. I got to work for Robert Schuller for a year. So I got to get a sense of who he was in the world. And even though his story seems to have ended sadly, he made a real impact on the world. And I love that about him. My third one was Will Rocking Bear, who teaches me to be impeccable, uh, impeccably aligned with everything that I think, say, and do. He's the one that held me accountable to my work. And I'm so grateful for that. And the fourth one is Gary Dahl. Anyone know who Gary Dahl was? He passed away about six months ago. He was the creator of the Pet Rock. Yeah. <laughs> you laugh, but he made millions of dollars on that, putting a rock inside a box. 
And what Gary, uh, Gary Dahl taught me, or teaches me, is to create great wealth from a simple idea. <laughs> and that's important to me, you know? Who are the models in your life? And what are they teaching you? Whether they're still here or they're gone. Whether they're historic or family or anything in between. Who are the models in your life? Write their name down. Write what it is that they teach you by being in the world or having been in the world. Yes? generous if you've already <laughs> I didn't want her to be lost. <laughs> this should feel really good. Kind of open your heart up. And this list can change, too. At one time, Arnold Schwarzenegger was on my list. And he just made too many of those movies with too many deaths, and I took him off. <laughs> Feel like you've got a good start on this and you want to set it down? We're going to take a break and we'll be back at 10 minutes after 8 o'clock. Two roads diverge in the yellow road. And sorry I could not travel both. And be one traveler long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other, as just as fair and having perhaps a better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay on leaves, no step had trodden back. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how. Way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling with a sigh somewhere, ages and ages since. Hence, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took one less travel time, and it has made all the difference. We're all on a perfect path. We are not following anyone. We are being called to be us. Yet there are these markers along the way. Some are models. 
and some are other resources that just happen to show up in our lives. And I'm going to talk about that. That's the part on the bottom of the blue page. What would be the things in your life that you rely upon? What people, what institutions, what groups, what information do you rely on for your life? Let me read you my list. I'm not reading it that you would copy it, but that you would see what came to me as I did this process. The resources on which I can always rely. Divine presence within and all around me. My passion for life and the expression of my purpose. My love and devotion to Barbara. <laughs> my resourcefulness and my ability to achieve whatever I set my mind to. My spiritual awareness and my personal self-discipline. The wisdom keepers who guide and support me beyond this physical realm. Members and friends of Center for Spiritual Living Ashram. You're on my list. <laughs> my practitioners. My ministerial colleagues. And the folks that work at Centers for Spiritual Living in Golden, Colorado. That's my list. Those are my resources that I can count on. What are your resources? Write them down. worry about what's on the board and what you're doing. <laughs> Does it have to be 10? No, it doesn't have to be anything. But it's good to know that you're supported, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This is something you're going to continue working on, right? Mm -hmm. You are supported. In fact, that's the point of the exercise of the models and the resources. You're not having to do this alone. There are people that are helping you along the way. You have guides. You know, they may not walk up and shake your hand and say, I'm here to guide you. But if you look at what they do, they give you indications and, and, and ideas and direction. And then there's all these other people that really love and support you. No exceptions. Anyone in this room, somebody loves you. Somebody wants you to be 
happy and whole and feel good about yourself. Sometimes you're sitting next to you. Or across from you. We've all got them. We're a community of people that hold one another up. There's lots of that in your life. It's good to be aware of it. Because sometimes you do feel alone. Sometimes you think you're, you've got the problem. But that's not the truth. The truth is that we're all supported. Life loves us and shows up for us all the time. We just have to look for it. We have to remember it. We have to live in it and have that in our lives. It's true that even though sometimes other people look like they're the problem, truly, we are our worst enemy. Because we forget all we've done, how wonderful life really is. So the phrase on the board behind me is a phrase that I was taught to learn to release that whole business of things aren't working out. And it was quite, it was quite a day. I was at a workshop down in Florida. And the exercise that we did was to fill in the blanks of this statement and then to share it with like three other people and have them tell us that it isn't true. And we had to defend it and we had to stand by it. And we had to raise our voices and really get into it. And this was my statement. I've never changed this. This was the way it was that day and it stayed. I no longer indulge in the debilitating act of self-judgment, which in the past I used to deny my absolute perfection. Instead, I accept and embrace the beauty and magnificence of my life now. And then I had to defend it with these three strangers. And they're going, no, you don't need it. And I got louder and louder. And then something happened. It got real. It got so real that I couldn't be there for the next person in our little, little foursome. Because I had to go, f this is how long ago this was, I had to go find a payphone. <laughs> and call her and sob on the phone saying, I got it. It shifted everything. Because I had a life where a lot of people were, had made me wrong. My mother, my first wife, uh, my coaches, my teachers. Lots of people told me I was wrong. I wasn't good enough. Not anymore. And of course, I, I brought that into me, and that was just always there. You idiot. You stupid. How could you have done that? That's so stupid. That was the voice in my head. And that voice died that day. Yay. Yay. I mean, I haven't had my moments, but truly nothing like that ever again. And my life works because I was willing to let go of that internal, that internal critic that wouldn't leave me alone because I wouldn't let it leave me alone. I had built it into my personality. So we not, we're not going to do that exercise tonight, but I really invite you to write this down, maybe on the back of your blue page, and sit with it and see what belongs in that. And then maybe find somebody that you can share that with that is going to do more than just say, well, that's nice. Someone that you trust enough to hold that with you, that you no longer live with that debilitating thing. And it is debilitating. Anything that we let get in our way debilitates us, doesn't allow us to shine forth as we are. Whatever it is in you that needs to die, let it die. So the rest of you can live. What was the topic tonight? <laughs> goals? goals? Maybe we should set some goals. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, you go to pass it down. Again, just keep them at the end of the table if you would, so we can get to all the folks that are going to watch this video right here and go. I want that stuff. They'll be stopping by or writing, sending emails. We want to make sure we got stuff. So if you've received the pink sheet and you know what it says, it may not be your happiest moment. But if you read the book, you know that David wrote this thing about how you should be planning goals out 30 years. I'm not asking you to plan out 30 years. I'm just asking you to plan for the rest of your life. Huh? 
Totally. Yeah, right. And I get, I'll tell you what, I, I, I think David said something in a book about this, but this is what I believe, is that if you have lots and lots of goals, you're going to live a really long time because you've got lots to do. It's when you run out of things to, that, that you want to engage in that life loses its, its value. He talks in the book about retirement. Retirement is just a reprioritizing. It isn't, doesn't mean you don't have things you want to accomplish in life. It just means you're doing it maybe a little differently. You're not doing it. And most retired people are busier than people that work. I've heard that from many people. I, I, in fact, I, I still question what that retirement thing means. But I'm sure there's something out there. But I know that, that when we have a reason to get up in the morning, when something calls to us to do, we're going to keep getting up in the morning. It's when we run out of those things that life loses its meaning. They say that people that have been on a, on a corporate path or worked for a large company year after year after year and then suddenly retire without thinking about it usually don't live very long. It's because they, they haven't thought about what they would do without those, those corporate or business uh, initiatives to lead them and give them purpose. No, we're responsible for our own purpose, and this is your chance to do it. So I want you to reach way out. Now, one thing David says in the book is he doesn't like the idea of setting a time on it at all. So I'm not going to press that this year, but I like that. I, in fact, what I like to do is kind of reach out like 30 years. What would, what would I be doing in 30 years? I'll be, I'll be 92. What would I want to do at 92? I've met some 90-somethings recently, and they're very active. That's very cool. People are living longer, so I need a plan. What am I going to do when I'm 92? You know? And I write it down. And then I write down something maybe when I'm 90 or when I'm 88. Something cool that I can set to say, this is something I'm going to do. Now, you talk about having thousands of goals. That's, that's lovely. That overwhelms me. But you could come up with 10, right? So get a shot at this. The rest of your life, the big, audacious, hairy goals you want to set. Yeah, something crazy that is out of the box that you'd like to do. What do you want to do? Who, who do you want to meet? What do you want to see? What do you want to experience? What? What's out there? It really calls to you. One of the ones on my list, I'm going to meet the Dalai Lama. I don't know how, I don't know where, but I'm gone. I've already had a, a lovely interaction with a, a Nobel Peace Laureate when he came to Asheville and I bought him lunch. Really? Muhammad Yunus? What's on your list? What do you want to accomplish? What do you want to see? What do you want to experience? This isn't about changing the world, it's about rewarding yourself for living a fantastic life. The sky's the limit. This is no time to be demure. <laughs>
don't have to know how. In fact, if you're caught up in how, you're just playing so small. Anybody written down they want to go to outer space? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not one in the room. Scare yourself a little bit. You know, write it down and go. Oh, shit. <laughs> It wasn't sheesh that really came there. Who wants to uh, share one thing on their list? Anyone around here? <laughs> this has been one of mine for a while, is to um, own an apartment on um, one of the retirement cruise ships. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Who else wants to share one? <laughs> Kevin and I have our own HGTV show. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I think mine's too simple. I want to go to the Galapagos. Galapagos? Very nice. Going this way. Going over here? Olympia. To own a billion dollar metaphysical practice. Oh. There you go. <laughs> I'd like to perform at the Apollo. There you go. There you go. There you go. I'll be there. I love it. I want to go to the Tony Awards, the Oscar, the Golden Globe, and walk down the red carpet. Okay. Okay, but we gotta lose the want. I don't care about what you want. Okay, I, I want I'm what you're gonna to do. Walk down the oh god. Red okay, she's gonna walk down the red carpet. I'm going to eat pastries in Paris. There you go. Oh, nice. That's giving a little sampling. i got to work on my list. It's getting a little stale. Uh, write at least three more books on mastering spiritual wellness. My next book comes out October 21st. I want to travel to India, England, France, and Italy. I want to have a beautiful home on the beach in, in Florida. I want I will be an elder statesman of the Science of Mind movement. Already are. Okay, well I'm not an elder statesman. <laughs> Give me a couple of more years, okay? I want to speak and teach the Science of Mind throughout the world. Who's I want the to... one? Yeah, you. Okay, you're right. I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> that, you know, it doesn't say wrong here. Okay, it says that I will achieve during the remainder of my life. Uh, I will counsel new thought ministers on effective methods of building community because that's what we've done. Yeah. And everybody should know how to do what we've done. And what you've got is important to you and it's meaningful to you. And if you set that as your intention, you will achieve it. How? You don't have to know. 
Just be open to it, and it will reveal itself. It always does. You feel good about your list? Okay, then let's uh, let's bring it down a little bit here. Uh, now I'm trusting that nothing you put on your list you intend to accomplish in the next five years. These are lifetime goals. Why would you have put anything that's in the next five years? Because that goes on this list on the hot <laughs> So let me give you a clue on this one. This is between 2017 and 2022. That's the five years we're talking about. 2017 through 2022. Okay? That's on the hot pink that's coming to you. Five years. 2017 to 2022. Okay? What will you accomplish in your life? During that period of time, 2017, you see, that does not include 2016. 2017 to 2022, what will you accomplish? What will you accomplish? I did not. may be that some of the things that you put on the first list on the, on the pink sheet may need you to do some things in the next five years to accomplish those goals. There may be some steps involved. Think about that as you're looking over the next five years. What would you learn? Maybe you have this great desire to go to Paris. And maybe you want to set before this trip to Paris to learn French. Could happen. That might be something that you'd want to do before you do the other. So, are there any things that that would help you in that that lifelong list that you could do in the next five years? Not this year. You guys hard tonight.
Well, let me ask the question before we do. <laughs> Who has something that they are setting as an outcome in their lives between 2017 and 2022 that they would like to share? Only one. Okay. My pastries in Paris, I didn't put a time limit on since there wasn't a time limit. And within the next year, or five years, I'll be drinking wine on the Rhine. <laughs> Good for you. I'm going to be a minister by 2019. <laughs> Anybody else want to, want to put one out? A degree in health and wellness and become a family fun coach. Family fun. Fun, if you end? Oh, cool. I love it. Have fun. Very good. Give it up. Gabby's graduation party at the Biltmore. Very nice. Anybody else? All oh, these private people. I saw Chris move. To retire debt free and wealthy. You have one that you want to say out loud? Yes. It gets a little more real if you say it out loud. There it is. Okay, got one right here. So I got to do it in the mic. I will show my line at New York Fashion Week in January 2017. And where's the last place you, you, you were showing? Uh, I can't remember, Columbia maybe or Charlotte. Yeah, it was in Charlotte, as I recall, from the newspaper. One was in Charlotte. Yeah, you, you had uh, you, you had stuff in the same show that uh, uh, Calvin Klein had stuff, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, the same. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to pick out the most souped up, sexy RV and to get a map and map out the entire journey that this lady and I are going to go on. <laughs> and we're going to go all over the U.S. and Canada, but in 2017 we're going to pick out our van. Very cool. <laughs> to continue sharing and enjoying time with family and spirit family. Okay, thank you. All right, what do we leave out? Oh, yeah, this year. Well, it's August 1st. There's exactly five months left in this year. So why not... What's that? Yes, please. So why not come up with what it is that is outrageous, audacious, amazing, that you can demonstrate this teaching, these principles with, in the next five months? Ooh, it's getting real. So write them down on the green paper. Write them down on the green paper. It's coming around. One last time. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> we have one. Oh, she can share your love. What? <laughs> While you're doing that, I'm going to read out a little uh, happy pocket full of money. Some cool things that I thought applied. The universe, the world, the source, God, is friendly and supportive to your dreams and your aspirations. Simply have a vision, believe in that vision, and you will without fail realize it to the extent that you believe you will. All else is in your favor. So dream very big. Dream very, very big in me. I have wealth. I have abundance. I am joy. Goals do not have to be about money and career. There are countless worthy things to set as goals. That you have nothing to do with making money or a career. Personal goals like sports and travel and hobbies, as well as global goals like the environment and charity work. This is not a list 
of what you think you can achieve. It is a list of what you would get, what would give you the most incredible life, whether you think you can achieve it or not. A life that would be unbelievably fantastic for you. I am wealth. I am abundance. I am joy. some things on that five-year plan that need a little preparation. Maybe there's some things that you're going to put on this one that will get you going in that direction. You certainly want some congruence between these different segments of your life. Bigger, go home. Okay, like I said, we're just we're not doing the whole thing tonight. We're just beginning a process. What you've done here is you have begun making some promises to yourself. I'm not going to have anybody talk about what they wrote in the left, left, about the next five months that you set forth as an outcome in your life. I want you to come to me and tell me you wrote it on the paper and, you, and it happened in your life. That's what I want. Mean. So you got five months to come and tell me. All right. <laughs> but I want you to make a promise to yourself that you're not going to stop. That this that we did tonight was only a beginning, only a starting point on a journey of creating the life of your dream. You've just begun. You've hardly filled any of these out. These things will change, you'll modify, you'll strengthen, you'll expand these ideas. And you'll figure out why this stuff is important to you. 
One way to do this is to look at each one of these outcomes that you've set in your life and compare them to your purpose statement and your values and see that they're compatible and congruent. Is what you're doing congruent with your purpose for being here? If it's not, you might want to modify it. How does this all fit together as a great life? As a wonderful life where you did the thing you came to do and not a thousand other things you didn't come to do. This is your journey. And the best way to get there is to think about it. You've begun thinking about it by writing things on these papers. Now, if you take these pieces of paper and put them on your dresser or your desk, and then something ends up on top of them, you've buried them. And you've lost the impetus of this. We've started on a great journey tonight. There are some, I look around this room, there are people in this room that have extraordinary things to do. Extraordinary things to do. But you have to do it. Now you have all those resources, all those models for how to be successful in your life. Use them. Use them. Use this center to make your life work. Come and continually think about that life you're creating. And take the support of these ideas we teach here so that you get where you're wanting to go. So you'll be there. That's the point. Success is a choice. You've demonstrated that you desire success by writing some things down here. But you just got started. You gotta work it. You gotta make it happen. I believe in you. I'm doing everything I know how to do it and to do it in my life. And I want the same for you. But you gotta do it. So I want you to know that I love you. If you desire support on any of this and you want to talk about it, we'll find a way to have a conversation. The point is that it really is with you and all of the resources of your life that will make it happen. You're the general. You're in charge. You're the captain. You're the one that is leading this charge. Make it happen. Get on HQ. Be at the Apollo. These things you can do. I don't know what that is. It just came out funny. <laughs> so pick up your papers. Pick up your papers. And let's do a blessing on them. There's magic in this that has been written down tonight because these are the ideas of spirit. This is the truth of the lives of those in this class that are certainly the personification, the actualization of the divine presence. These are things that are meant to happen in this plane at this time through the beloveds that sit here. Each one holding these dreams, these plans, these outcomes. They're real. They're absolutely real. They already exist. And as we reach out and claim them and pursue them from within, they show up outside for us to see and touch and taste and smell. What a glorious experience, this journey called life. The planned life is the well-lived life. And I know that each one that chooses that path to diligently pursue that which is ours to have and to be <coughs> will have and be everything. What a joyous thing to know. Thank you, life. I'm showing up in this wonderful way so that we can walk that path that is ours to walk, that road less traveled, because that's our choice, and only we can do it. We let that be our truth right here, and we live from it in every moment. Thank you, life. And together we say, <laughs> so it is. Thank you. So it is. Very much. It's all yours, Barbara. Yeah, it's worth you guys. I'm going to have your own. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm not. Hey, that one's your video. I do not do that.